We're going to start our discussion about ignition testing, specifically secondary ignition testing, by going back to a starting point and talk about the misfires. Now, the demisfire data that you looked at indicate one single misfire or multiple cylinders misfiring. If one cylinder is misfiring, you can get away with looking at that one cylinder. If multiple cylinders are misfiring, it's probably something more common. So you might want to start with secondary ignition and primary testing. But we don't start there, really. That start is a wrong word. You might want to include this as part of your diagnostics. And first of all, don't assume that all misfires are caused by ignition. Just on the contrary, we find there are a number of causes. But we'll start with our single cylinder misfire. There we're going to start. We're going to look at the cylinder reporting the misfire. And remember in Ford, you're going to go to have to mode 6 to see it. Where you have a multiple cylinder misfire, we think a good part of this is primary secondary testing. We've gone through the scan data. We've looked at our codes. We're now ready to start doing something. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing in our second phase of our test. We've looked at the code. We've looked at scan data. We found all we can find out except what's the cause of this misfire. So we're going to connect our ignition scope to the secondary or primary, depending on the vehicle. Uh, for coil on plug, or quad fours, or vehicles like that, that the coil is mounted directly to the spark plug, you can use short extension wires as extensions, or you can use adapters that came with your equipment, although we haven't seen any that worked any better than short plug wires. But what we want you to understand is that this ignition pattern has to be analyzed at each point in the cycle. Every part of this is produced by a different aspect of firing the spark plug charging the coil with a with a strong magnetic field that can be collapsed, and then looking at the spark that results from causing the voltage to spike up. Those are three totally separate things. The spark is a result of the spike. The spike is a result of charging the coil. So as we look at all this, you're suddenly going to realize by looking at the spark and knowing the resistance inside the cylinder we can look at things like fuel mixture. And that's one of the things we think is important, is to look at some of the things. But in order to see all this detail and to get maximum value for secondary ignition testing and the time you're going to spend, we recommend, or really I recommend, making a recording and playing it back frame by frame. Yes, some things happen so quickly that you can't catch them on the live pattern. But in reality, until you start studying it, you won't get all the detail. And the detail is where the devil lies. Now, we'll do a case study that will include secondary ignition after we've done all the other things we need to be doing. But we want to show you how this fits into an overall system needed to gather fast and accurate diagnostic information and get at the root cause of the problems. And I said problems because the point we're going to make in here is there are problems. Now, here's common causes of misfire. We all know it can be ignition. That can be coil. It can be wires. It can be spark plugs. We've got secondary we can look at. We've got primary we can look at to test that. It can be fuel. Fuel control, fuel delivery. We don't know which one can be going bad. Fuel delivery it can be spe specific cylinders, while fuel control tends to be all cylinders. Mechanical engine and intake valve sealing and EGR. Any one of these can be causing it. Now, our challenge to you is what one test can be used to identify problems in all of these areas. We got four main areas, ignition, fuel, engine mechanical, and EGR. We say that secondary ignition can be used as one test to show you information about all of these individual parts. This is the dirty dozen, or the, or the dirty four, the big four, the most frequent causes of problems. So let's start taking a look and seeing what kind of information we're going to need to solve this case study we're talking about.